Hello, everybody. We're gearing up for PDAC. I'm Peter Clausey with Investor Intel. A new guest today, Oh My Gold Mines, whose symbol actually is OMG, uh, with an interesting new story. And we have the CEO, Mario Stefano, with us from San Diego today. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. We know some of the same people, but you and I have never met, so nice to do it virtually. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks. Uh, first, the corporate stuff. You carried out an RTO in November of 2020, and your balance sheet shows $56,000 on it, and yet you're carrying out a 5,000-meter drill campaign. How is that possible? Well, um, the financial statements you're looking at are prior to closing of the RTO. It's, it's the financials of the shell. Um, today, we have about $3.5 million in cash. Uh, prior to us completing the RTO, Silver Corp came in and invested $4.5 million U.S. in a private placement. Um, and that cash is really what uh, we're working our way through with this 5,000-meter drill program, which I think is going to be pretty exciting as results start to come out. Where is the property? So the property is in Guyana. It's the old Omai oh gold mine. And, um, you know, it was the flagship property in Guyana, if not all of Latin America in the 90s. It was discovered by Cambior. And people that know Cambior you know, probably do recognize them as great operators. But at the same time, they were great explorers. Um, so a lot of the projects in Quebec and or Latin America were old Cambior projects. So what, sorry, what, what years are we talking about, Mario? When was it in operation? So it was from the mid, so if I say around 93 to about uh, 2004, 2005. Um, but basically what happened there, um, it was shut down by IM Gold. $400 gold will do that to you. Yeah. And in fact, uh, you know, for, maybe they could have kept it alive at 400. I was actually at 350. <laughs> it worked its way up to 350. So um, really, really what happened there, as everyone knows, uh, Cambior had some uh, hedge book issues. So they were in a bit of a financial uh, situation that they needed to resolve. Uh, I'm Gold acquired them. Um, and I'm Gold made a decision to shut down the mine because Cambior didn't really put any money in exploration. And we know that for a fact because two of our geologists that work for us, Linda Hesterman, um, as well as another geologist, were exploration managers for Cambior and I'm Gold. And they didn't spend any money looking for extensions to the ore body. Oh, they just exhausted. They just exhausted the resource. They didn't exhaust the property. Exactly. That is exactly what they did. And and you know, uh, sorry to interrupt. You know who else that happened to? Was uh, Troilus Troilus Gold in Quebec? Yeah. They, exha they exhausted the resource and went ush and walked away. Yep. And I know that area and that project quite well. So that's exactly it. Happens many many times. Well, look at look. Think of Kirkland Lake. Um, right. I mean, Kinross had that project, and if you think about it. You know, no one thought there was anything left there. Um, and if it was low grade, and it wasn't until you got much deeper that you ha had the big discovery at Kirkland Lake, even in uh, even um, the project in Australia, you know, the Swan Zone. I mean, these, there's a lot of gold left behind by big major companies. Where's the best place to find a mine? Yeah, where there where there's one existing. It's in the shadow there. of the head frame. Exactly. I'm a, Tim, I'm a Timmins boy initially, so we grew up learning that. Well, remember, I'm, I'm the ex-CFO of Lakeshore Gold, right? So I know that quite well, and, and I know how hard it is to find deposits, but I know as you just, if you're from Timmins, there's a lot of gold there. You just got to look and drill. And that's really what happened here, right? There was really no drilling by Cambior to, to extend the resource. And when I'm Gold had the asset, they had the discovery in CERN on the Roosevelt mine, which was actually a Cambior discovery, mind you, but um, they made the decision to move the mill because they had to move the mill regardless. There was about 300,000 ounces from an historical resource sitting below the mill at Omai. Uh, but I'm Gold made the decision to move that mill to Suriname to advance uh, the Roosevelt mine, which at the time was the right decision, right? 16 million ounces, right? It's a major discovery, world-class mine. Uh, but really, that's the opportunity for us because as a result of that, a lot of gold was left behind um, at Omai. And and Iron Gold knew that because prior to shutting it down, they did drill some holes below the Fennel pit. So the Fennel pit was mined to, say, 200 meter depth, and then they hit this non uh, mineralized dike post mineral. Uh, and they did drill some holes, it's about 150 meters thick, and they drilled some holes through the dike, and they drilled 46 holes. And they estimated internally between one and a half and two and a half million ounces, but you couldn't access that via open pit. And let, let's disclaimer that right now, not 43101, 
Don't don't listen to anything he says. Disclaimers under forty three one hundred one. I make that very clear. This is just I am gold uh, internal resource. Uh, we got to do a lot more work there. But but the key message there is there was a lot of gold left behind and some great hits. Everything you know, wide zones, super high grades where you get the thousand and three thousand grams uh, per meter type hit. Um, as well as you get, you know, the 10 meters of 20, 30 grams. So you, you get a wide range of holes uh, below the finale pit. But it just reinforces that a lot of gold was left behind. So what's the drill program for? Are you twinning holes? Or you have a specific uh, geologic goal? Or are you just exploring the property? Ah, no, that, that's a great, great uh, question. So if you look at our more recent um, uh, releases, we actually issued some assays uh, below the Winot pit. So there's really two pits here at oh my and these two pits combined uh, produced about 3.8 million ounces at 1.6 grams so not only was it a large deposit it was also a very high grade for an open pit and a prior operator drilled some holes below this went not pit but because of a uh, lack of money and and you know 2013 14 um they never assayed these holes and if you look at the release we just issued um uh, last week um we drilled uh, 14 meters and nine grams or we assayed 14 meters and nine grams below the Winot pit so we're actually very confident that the Winot pit extends to depth just like uh, the Fennel pit does and if you look at uh, the prior release as well we also had you know 20 meters around three and a half grams so we're hitting wide zones high grade zones so we got a huge advantage here because we had 6,000 meters of unassayed core that's really going to help us understand the model here geologically yeah, that, that's a freebie that's a huge freebie, huge amount of investment that we would have to make ourselves to drill that. So now we're actually drilling when not. We're going to do 10,000 or 5,000 meter drill program, about 10 holes, and we're going to drill all below and around the when not pit. And the reason for doing that, I'm going to call it the low hanging fruit. We think at the end of that drill program, we're going to have enough data from the historical data that we're able to get from I'm Gold, uh, like the uh, blast hole data, uh, drill hole data below the pit, uh, as well as what. Uh, we just recently assayed from the prior operator plus what we're going to drill we should be able to come up with a resource that went up by the end of the year a 43101 compliant resource this time <laughs> uh that the market can rely on um and hopefully it's sizable right it doesn't it doesn't take right i mean the way to think about it there's about um you know 1.5 to 1.8 million ounces mined that went not to about 180 190 meter depth if you can extend that to say 300 meter depth or 350 meters, you do the math, right? You can get a lot of gold there. That's still pretty shallow. It's still very shallow. That's open pit depth. And it'll be, you know, this is the greenstone belt. This is going to go deep, right? There's no reason why this is not going down to a thousand or two thousand meters. So, what's your cost per meter drilled? So we are in Guyana. Uh, unfortunately, as, as you know, you're a Timmins boy. I, you know, my mining career really started in Timmins, even though I worked out for Naranda. But serious mining career started in Timmins. You know, you could do Timmins uh, for 100 to $150 a meter all in. I'm, I, another company I'm involved with, you know, we're less than $150 a meter in Quebec. Um, here, it's going to be about $250 a meter all in, so quite reasonable. Uh, that, that's no different than drilling in northern parts of Canada where you don't have infrastructure or, or you know, British Columbia. If you go far north, it's double that. So, What makes up that delta? Is it uh, labor? Is it uh, infrastructure to get your supplies in? Is it to get the core out to a lab? It's a combination of it all, right? A lot of it's the infrastructure. Um, you know, we do have an airstrip, uh, but we have to uh, provide our own fuel. So we have no electricity there. There's no grid. So basically, I think of it, you're, you're basically providing diesel fuel. So it makes it a little bit more expensive. Can you run solar? You could. It is one thing we will look at, uh, you know, once we're ready to make a development decision here. Uh, we're not at that point yet. Uh, there's also offshore oil now discovered in, in Guyana and, and one of the byproducts of offshore oil is natural gas. So maybe you can do, you know, very cheap uh, natural gas uh, with a big generator at site. So there's lots of options now that are opened up to us that weren't available in the 90s and the early part of 2000. So you would have done a technical report on the QT or the RTO, but it wasn't a resource yeah. estimate. It was just a work report. Correct. What, Correct. What, uh, what did the budget call for? Uh, so really, really what we're looking for um, – is from our perspective we we've got a, a really strong exploration plan here and it's going to be a three-pronged approach the first one which we're starting now is drilling why not right because we think that's very low-hanging fruit 
we can demonstrate potentially an open pit resource, if not a combination open pit and underground mining at Winot. And I think that's going to give us credibility. The next stage is Fennel. Um, as I indicated, non 43101 compliant historical resource by in gold between one and a half to two and a half million ounces, depending on whether they cap the grades. Um, and but but we know there's quite a bit of gold there. But the, the the real value generator, having been in this market a lot, is that that blue sky potential, the ability to find new discoveries. And yeah. what's really important here, Peter, is not only was gold left behind at Fennel and when not, you know, this whole region wasn't explored. So you look at uh, the amount of drill meters at Omai, it was, just, it was less than 90,000 meters drilled until we now uh, are doing our 5,000 meter drill program. At Roosevelt, it's almost 900,000 meters drilled. You know, at, at Marion, which Dennis Lapointe, who's our geologist, he's, he's considered the, 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 the expert in the Guyana Shield, you know, they drilled uh, almost 700,000 meters. So we really had a fraction of the drilling in our area for a mine that's produced 3.8 million ounces. So. It's telling you there's a lot of potential here, but it's not just because we did drill that there's potential. You look at the geophysics, uh, and we were able to identify a lot of targets in and around uh, the existing pits. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go, go to a couple of key targets here for us. To the self of Winot, um, one thing that really came out of our, our assaying is there's mineralization in the sediments. And back then when they were mining Winot, they didn't really look in the sediments for gold mineralization. Uh, but if you look at Roosevelt and Marion, a lot of their gold is hosted in the sediments. And the yeah. assays that just came back, for example, that nine grams over 14 meters was in the sediments. So as we're looking at Winot, there is potential to not only expand it to depth, but also widen the pit into the sediments. And in the geophysics, we identified a couple of targets south of Winot um, that are in the sediments. Right. So now that we're seeing mineralization in the sediments, it's reinforcing to us from the geophysics that, hey, maybe there is something um, to the south of Winot that has never been tested that is worthy of testing. If you go to the Fennel, which is just north of Winot, to the east of Fennel, uh, I'm gold drilled a fan of holes, trying to look for the extension of Fennel to the east, and they didn't hit anything, and they couldn't have because from the geophysics, uh, we could see that there was no extension to Fennel. The drilling confirmed it. But if they continued to drill further east because they didn't have any geophysics that they were using back then, you know, shocking, but they didn't. Uh, when we ran the geophysics, we actually see a really large anomaly that looks very similar to Fennel uh, that to us is a high priority target. When, when Sandstorm put their $2 million investment in the company, it was this target called Broccoli Hill that was their number one target here. And it's not just the geophysics because I've seen lots of pretty colors in geophysics and um, you know, there's lots of targets that come out of a geophysics, but that's all they are as a target. But it's not just the geophysics, Peter. Uh, there's a lot of historical workings here. They call them port knockers, but think of them as alluvial miners. So there's a lot of historical working here of mining at this area called Broccoli Hill. Plus, um, there's some auger drilling as well with some ore grade. Uh, but basically, you know, the auger drilling um, has identified a 500 meter by 500 meter area with, with anomalous gold in it. Plus, add on top of that historical mining, add on top of that the geophysics. You know, that's a real high priority target for us. And that's going to be the second phase of our drill program. First phase, let's prove up what we have at Winot. Second phase, let's go to Fennel and start targeting some of these new targets, which we think there's a number of these new targets in and around here. And, and keep in mind, you know, this is really important to understand because people always go, you know, you know, this was operated by Angol Cambier. Of course, they would have seen all these targets. Well, it wasn't really well understood in the 90s, right? So yeah. if you look at, at Roosevelt, Roosevelt is not one massive super pit. It's a combination of, you know, smaller and larger pits. And uh, that wasn't really understood back then. But now we do understand that. Now that we know Marion, same thing, combination of larger and smaller pits and open pit and underground mining. That's exactly what we think we have at Omai, but the drilling hasn't occurred to, to prove it up. And that's what our, our program is going to try and show. So normally at this point, I would invite you to meet me for a beer at PDAC, which is happening in a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, here's my beer for PDAC with you, Mario. Yeah. It was lovely Cheers. to meet you. Uh, I'll follow up with you soon. Oh right. My Gold trades as OMG on the Venture Exchange. All right, Peter. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.